guys, it's Geekonomics here once again, and you join me on the GCSE playlist where we are working through macroeconomics. And today we are going to look at the macroeconomic equilibrium between aggregate demand and long run aggregate supply, and then we're going to think a little bit about this term economic growth. So let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, AD, C to the I to the G to the X minus M. C plus I plus G plus X minus M. In the previous video, we considered what each of these components actually are. So, consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, government expenditure, export expenditure, and import expenditure. Right, now, you will know that equilibrium, the market clearing equilibrium, is the point at which AD, in this instance, equals AS. Which, in this case, is at point A, and we will call this price PA and output of YA. Now, what would cause, ladies and gentlemen, economic growth? So we're going to be considering AD. And anything, therefore, which increases the components of AD, so that would be consumption, investment, government expenditure, or as a whole, net exports, anything which increases that will cause our AD curve to shift. Okay, now be careful, it's not a movement, it is a shift. So the AD curve, we're going to say shifts, for example, from AD1 to AD2. So we end up at a new equilibrium at B, output YB, price level PB. And we've moved in this direction and price has gone in this direction. So, we know that anything which causes C, I, G, or net exports to increase, that would shift AD2 to the right. Now, we'll have a think about what some of those things might be in a moment, but I just want to run by you something which one of my students used to do, and I think it's a really good way to illustrate this, particularly to the examiner in uh, an, an end of year exam or an external exam for that matter. What he used to do was he used to say to himself, right, okay, if AD is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M, I'm going to put some numbers in there for you, Mr. Examiner. So I'm going to say AD is equal to, let's say, C is 10 plus 10 plus 10, so it's CIG plus 20 minus 10. So it's C plus I plus G plus X minus M, 30 plus 10 equals 40. So he said AD1, for example, is equivalent to 40. Now that could be 40 million, 40 billion, whatever it is. Then he said, right, now I'm going to say that the government engineers somehow, they engineer an increase in the level of C. And so now I'm going to say that AD2 is equal to 50. So it's gone from 10 to 50 plus 10, plus 10, plus 20 minus 10. So all other things remaining equal, you'll be familiar with that notion, Cateris Paribus. So it's 50, 60, 70, 80. And so AD2, you can see the value of AD is 80 rather than 40, hence it has to have shifted along. It's a lovely little way to uh, express that. That is uh, the K-Dog theory from one of my students from Oh gosh, I can't remember now, seven or eight years ago maybe, but it's a great way to illustrate that. So that's, how, that's a great way to illustrate it, but let's think then about some of the things which might cause consumption to increase. So consumption, expenditure by firms on consumer goods and services in order to bring the consumer a certain amount of satisfaction. So let's think about some things the government could do to maybe stimulate consumption. Well, number one. The government, or the Bank of England, they could make borrowing cheaper. In other words, they could lower the interest rate. Now, that would help in a number of ways. Number one, if you were a homeowner, or you're paying off a mortgage on a home, and you were on what's known as a variable rate mortgage, then when the base rate falls, the building society, the, the bank, should reduce the rate of interest on your mortgage. So that means you pay less on your mortgage, so you've got more for those little niceties in life. More for little treats. So as a consequence, consumption might go up. Or, 
You could fiddle around with the tax bans and the tax brackets. And you could, for example, as the government have recently done, you could increase the personal tax allowance. So the amount of money that you can earn before you start paying any tax, as you well know, has gone up to 11,600. Well, that will give some people, lots of people, more money in their pocket, and so consumption may go up. Or the government may decide, let's increase the minimum wage. More people have more money, so consumption goes up. So anything at all like that would increase C and help us to shift AD to the right. What about I, investment? Remember what investment is. Buy firms on capital goods and machinery. So what could the government do to help that? Well, what do firms like? They like certainty. So the government or the central bank could make it very clear that they're going to maintain the rate of inflation in the economy at a nice constant level. That gives firms certainty, they're more likely to invest. The government or the central bank could reduce borrowing costs again because firms not all firms have. Not all firms are like Apple with billions of uh, dollars lying around. They have to borrow to buy large pieces of equipment and machinery. So they could reduce borrowing costs. That then incentivizes investment, and so as a consequent, investment might go up. What could the government do? Well, the government, as we've talked about, the government raises its money through. I mean, the biggest revenue earner is, of course, through taxation, income tax. So the government could put increased taxes, give the government a little bit more money, spend more. Or, alternatively, the government could say, we're not going to increase taxes, we'll just borrow a bit more money. Now, you'll know, I'm sure, that in the UK, we're already at, our borrowing is 90% of our GDP, so we're already uh, massively in the red in that respect. So, you know, it's not something really you want to be doing. But that's one way in which the government could increase its expenditure. Exports and imports. Now, exports, slightly more tricky. So who buy, let's think about who buys our exports. Foreigners buy our exports. Why might they buy our exports? Well, maybe because they're cheap. I suppose maybe, but you know, cheap generally uh, as well comes with cheap and nasty. So if the quality is not so good, you might not sell them. But if you could maybe... Uh, lower costs of production for firms so that firms could then sell their goods at a lower price relative to their competitors then you might sell more exports or the government the central bank could intervene in the foreign exchange markets they could fiddle around with our exchange rate and we'll get into, into that in another video but they could lower the value of our exchange rate and if I could say just this to you, ladies and gentlemen, remember that the export price always moves in the same direction as our currency. So if our currency depreciates, our exports become more price competitive, and therefore we may sell more of them. And then what about imports? Well, imports, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. Imports, we've got minus M. And the problem with imports is that when you buy an import, although the good is coming in, the money is actually leaking out of the economy. So therefore, if you want to boost AD, you would want to have fewer imports, not more. So think about ways in which you could have fewer imports. And of course, Donald Trump, President Trump, is all about this at the moment, reducing the number of goods you know, coming in from abroad, being much more nationalistic in that respect. So think about that. You could... Again, you could fiddle around with the exchange rate and make it more expensive to bring goods in from outside. Or you can put uh, barriers up, not physical barriers, not a wall, but you could put up, for example, trade barriers such as tariffs and quotas. Or you could subsidise your own uh, domestic industries and again, that would uh, help to prevent goods coming in from abroad. So again, that would help to reduce um, uh, import expenditure. And if you could do all of those, of course, the government, is in it, what they want to do is they want to try and do all of these things, try and get them all moving in the same direction at the same time, so that AD is moving in this direction. Now, I'm sure you've noticed there is one sort of nota benesto here in terms of a trade-off. When we're going in this direction, real output's rising, and that's all tip-top, ladies and gentlemen. But look at what's happened to the price level. Price level has gone up from PA to BB. So we're building in inflationary pressures into the economy, which 
at low and sort of stable rates is okay, but once it starts to get higher and starts to fluctuate maybe a bit more, um, a bit more um, unpredictably, I believe is the word I'm looking for, then that becomes problematic. So the whole management of this starts to become more and more complicated the more we delve into it. But that's as far as we're going to delve into it in this one, ladies and gentlemen. So that's it from me on this one. Bye for now.